In this lecture, we want to review some basic concepts that we have already learned in statics. And those concepts are centroid of a section and the moment of inertia. Also, we will talk about shear and moment diagrams in beams. These topics are essential for determining the bending stress properties that we are going to talk about in this week. So without knowing how to determine shear and moment diagrams or determining the moment of inertia, we can't determine how much is bending stress in the beams. And today I want to briefly review what we have learned so far in statics. First of all, I want to talk about the centroid of a section. Say we have an arbitrary shape like this, and we want to determine where is the centroid of the section. Before doing that and writing down equations, can someone tell me what does the centroid of section mean physically? Centroid of a shape is a point that the area is evenly distributed around that point. Say we have a shape like this, and we assume that the mass is distributed evenly on that shape. If we have a needle and put that at the centroid of the section, that's going to have equilibrium, that's going to stay around that needle. So that's physically the definition of the centroid. But how to determine the centroid? First of all, we need to say what is the origin that we are going to determine the distance of centroid from that origin. Let's assume that these two axes are showing the axis of origin in this case. Distance of the centroid to the x-axis is shown by y bar because that would be the distance in the y direction. And distance of the centroid to the y-axis is shown by the x bar. We can define x bar and y bar from the integral equation. x bar would be integral of x multiplied by dA divided by integral of dA. dA stands for one tiny small area and we know that the entire area is simply sum of those tiny small areas. x and y are distance of those tiny areas from origin. So these are the coordinates of dA. Similar to that, if we want to determine the location of the centroid from the x-axis or y-bar, we can say integral of y dA divided by integral of dA. Integral of dA is simply the total area of the section. Integral of y dA is similar to the moments that we have. Assume that each area or small area dA is a force, moment would be arm the, or distance multiplied by that force. So x bar and y bar are showing the first moment of area divided by area. For instance, for a rectangle with the width of b and height of h, because the section is symmetric, we know that the centroid would be on the middle of the section. So distance to the bottom would be h over 2, and distance to the sides would be b over 2. Similar to that, we can define that for a circle. The centroid would be at the middle of the section, so the distance to the sides would be half of the or radius. So for a triangle like this, the centroid would be closer to the bottom part. Say the entire height of the section is A. The distance of the centroid to the bottom part would be A over 3, and that means that the distance to the top would be 2 thirds of A. So these are some section properties for simple shapes. In order to determine the section properties for a combined section that consists of a few simple shapes connected together, we simply divide the section into simpler parts and then determine the area and the centroid for each part and then use the centroid equation for determining the location of the centroid about the x and y axis. Let's solve a problem numerically to understand how to use the centroid equation for determining the location of the centroid of a combined shape. Look at this problem. Assume that we want to determine the centroid for this T-shape and determine its distance to the top portion of this T-shape. This T-shape is made of two rectangles. The top rectangle has a width of 12 inch and height of 1 inch, and the bottom rectangle has a width of half an inch and height of 10 inches. Um, first of all, this problem is symmetric about the vertical axis, about the y-axis. So we don't need to determine x bar. We know that the centroid is going to pass through the axis of symmetry. The only thing that we need to determine for this problem would be distance of centroid to the top of the section, or y bar. The equation for determining y bar is sigma a sub i multiplied by y sub i 
divided by sigma a sub i. It means that we need to divide this T-shape into two parts and determine the area and the centroid for each of those. First of all, we need to consider an arbitrary axis. I'm going to assume that the arbitrary axis is located on top of the section. I'm going to split this T-shape into two rectangles as shown here. Then I'm going to form a table and determine the area and a Y for each of these two parts. All right, let's do that here. Area for the first part, which is the top rectangle, would be 12 multiplied by 1, so that would be 12 squared inch. Distance of centroid of that top rectangle to the top part of the section would be half of the thickness of that rectangle, so that would be half an inch. And AY multiplied by YI would be, would be 6 inch cube. We are going to do the same for the bottom rectangle. Area of that would be 10 multiplied by half an inch, that would be 5 squared inch. And distance of centroid of the bottom section to the top part of the section would be half of the height of the bottom rectangle plus the thickness or height of the top rectangle. So that would be 10 over 2 or 5 plus 1 inch, that would be 6 inch. Now we can determine how much would be the total area and total a multiplied by y. Total area is going to be 17 inch squared and total a y would be 36 inch cubed. Now I'm going to plug that back into the y bar equation and that would give us 2.12 inch which is the distance of the centroid to top of the section. So I just wanted to present one example on how to use the centroid equation for determining the location of a centroid in a combined section. We will talk about more complicated cases in the other problems. Also in the next video, we will talk about the moment of inertia and how to calculate that. Also, we will talk about the bending and shear diagrams.